Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the fifth and final day of the Missioning Installation Contracting Command Advanced Planning Brief for Industry, or APBI. My name is Louis Trinidad and I am the Director of the Make Office of Small Business Program and your MC for today's event. The APBI will address a variety of topics helpful in preparing American small business to invest the time to compete for Army contracting opportunities. Today's APBI is being conducted only on the Microsoft Teams platform and is the only small business outreach event forecasting Army acquisition needs executed by the MIC for the year. Next slide, please. Please take a moment to review the rules of engagement for this week's event. You do have the opportunity to ask questions in Microsoft Teams live chat. There is a small chat icon located in the navigation bar of the team windows for submitting questions. As today's audience size does not permit adequate time for answering all questions submitted through the chat, they will be captured and answered in the coming days before being posted to SAM.gov. Next slide, please. Today's agenda will begin with opening remarks by the commander of the 418th Contracting Support Brigade located at Fort Hood, Texas, and the Office of Small Business Programs Assistant Director. The rest of the day, you will hear from MIC contracting officers as they present requirements from each of their individual office locations. All requirements briefed today will be sent to event attendees following the event, and a full three-year detailed acquisition forecast will be posted to SAM.gov. As mentioned before, you have the opportunity to ask questions on Microsoft Teams. Also, please be as descriptive as possible. For example, include the slide number, title of the slide, requirement, etc. You may also provide written questions to us via email after this event. The details on how to submit questions are already posted in today's chat. If you are a presenter in today's virtual event, please ensure your team platform is on mute until it comes time for your presentation. Included in today's presentations are two 10 minute breaks, so please be mindful of the schedule. Next slide, please. We will now hear from the commander of the 418th Contracting Support Brigade, Colonel Jesse Griffith. The 418th Contracting Support Brigade is dedicated to delivering timely and decisive contracting effects and business solutions to our critical mission partners in support of key Army readiness initiatives wherever, whenever needed through its nine subordinate contracting offices. Sir, the floor is yours. Lewis, thank you very much for that uh, great introduction. I really appreciate that. Uh, good morning, everyone again. Uh, Colonel Griffith from the 418th Contracting Support Brigade. Uh, I know over the last few days you've heard um, uh, from our sister units, uh, Field Director at Office uh, Fort Eustis, uh, Field Director at Office Fort Sam Houston, and the 419th Contracting Support Brigade. But as it is with everything that uh, we always try to do, uh, you always save the best for last. Uh, so here we are. Um, so before, uh, as we get started, um, you know, I, I'd like to, you know, talk a bit why I think small businesses are so important. Uh, small businesses are a critical component of our national, regional, and local economies. They not only stimulate job creation, spur innovation and growth, but they also assist the U.S. Army with the supplies, services, and construction needed to execute its mission. A mission to continue to build readiness and modernization as we look to achieve a resilient and adaptive army of 2030 that is capable to deploy, fight, and win our nation's wars in any theater. In our nation's homeland, whether there's a prime contractor or subcontractor, small businesses keep our installations moving forward and thriving in an ever-changing world. Remember, you don't have to be a prime contractor. You can be a subcontractor who gets the chance to build a stellar, stellar reputation based on the great work that you do, and that can lead to experience and growth. And the next time, you may be the prime contractor that is giving another new small business an opportunity. So with that, I will turn it over uh, to Mr. Trinidad, and then after that, you'll get to hear from my teammates within the 418th Contracting Support Brigade about the tremendous opportunities we have within our area of support. And like I said, uh, leading off on Monday, we look forward to look, doing business with you. Thanks, Lewis. Thank you, Colonel Griffith. Next slide, please. 
As many of you know, prior to being selected as a director of the MEC Office of Small Business Programs, I served as the assistant director for the 418th Contracting Support Brigade. Although we have initiated a hiring action for my replacement and hope to have a new assistant director soon, I continue to act acting assistant director and will now brief you on the 418th Contracting Support Brigade Office of Small Business Programs. All right, uh, next slide, please. Bear with me, I'm just moving this so I can uh, look directly at you. All right, so I'll let you uh, provide you an opportunity to review some of uh, the uh, agenda. Uh, next slide, please. All right, this slide provides our mission and purpose, so I'll let you read that on your own. I did want to highlight that we are here to maximize utilization of small business and also to get the mission done. So we assist with all kinds of things to make that happen. We help with the market research support. We also uh, get involved early in the acquisition process and provide uh, advice to our contracting uh, members. Uh, we also serve in source selections and assist with evaluations of uh, small business participation plans and subcontracting plans. And we're also deeply involved in recommending small business set asides. So we are basically your champions, ensuring that small business utilization is maximized. Next slide, please. All right, so these are uh, the folks that support the 418th Contracting Su Support Brigade. So I have uh, three small business professional, and like I mentioned before, I am currently in acting capacity but I hope to bring somebody real, real soon, hopefully. Uh, and then that person will take over as assistant director for the 418th. Next slide, please. All right, so this slide provides some dues of small business contracting. Uh, I'm not gonna go over every single one of them, but I do want to highlight some. Uh, the first one on uh, Sam, it's important that, of course, if you want to do business with the government, that you register to do business with the government. And this goes hand in hand also with uh, contract uh, contacting Apex Accelerators. So Ex Apex Accelerators, they're formerly known as PTAX, Procurement Technical Assistance Center. They will actually help you get set up to do business with the government. So if you're not registered to do business with the government, that should be your first stop. And I can tell you that I, sometimes I have contractors that come visit us and it's their first time and they pay five, up to $5,000 to get assistance from other contractors to get registered. So, you know, this, uh, the services offered by uh, the PTAC or Apex Accelerators, they're free of charge. So I would say take advantage of those. They are a great resource. Uh, I, I would say that not all PTACs are created equal, but some of the ones that have visited even have like contracting officers that have retired and are really knowledgeable and even assist the uh, members or people that, that are interested in submitting proposals, they'll review them for you. So they're a real great resource, especially for those contractors that are just starting out. Uh, so there's another bullet here, become familiar with government contracting regulations. That's a big one, and that's one that sometimes, especially with newer contracts, there's, uh, they, they don't quite read all of the clauses and provisions in their contracts, and there's some real big ones. As an example, uh, FAR Clause 52.219-14, that's limitations on contract, on subcontracting. Uh, it, if you uh, subcontract more than, than you should, right? Like, for example, if it's services and you subcontract more than 50%, uh, there could be some penalties. Uh, government treats that as fraud, and the penalty for violating that is five hundred thousand uh, dollars at a minimum. So if you if you're not aware of your your clauses and provisions, it could get you in a lot of trouble. So make sure you become familiar and read through those. Another thing that I see often is people will come to us and they're selling a great product or great service, but it's something that we don't buy. So before you come and see us, I would say do your research to make sure that what you are selling is something that we are buying. And I'm going to mention this probably a lot throughout throughout our presentations, but FPDS.gov, uh, Foxtrot, Papa, Delta, Sierra, 
FPDS.gov is a great website that gives you information uh, that's publicly available, okay, uh, without a password. So if you go to FPDS, you'll see a little search bar. It's kind of like a Google search bar. Uh, you can go in there, you can put a uh, DODAC uh, for an office. So DODAC stands for DOD Activity Address Code. And basically every contract in office has a DODAC and when they issue a solicitation or contract, those first six digits are the DODAC. So with that information, you can grab that DODAC, post it on that Google search bar, and it'll give you all of the contracts uh, that have been awarded by that particular office. And then uh, there's also an advanced feature search on that website. And what you can do from there is you can actually put the NAICS codes uh, that you are interested in working in, and it'll give you all of the contracts that have been awarded under those NAICS codes. So it's a great resource and something that if you're not familiar with, I would recommend uh, that you definitely take a look at. Uh, another thing I would say is respond to those sources sought. Okay, so I wanted to kind of explain how we use that sources sought process. So I have my small business professionals, they're, they're very deeply involved in ensuring that when we ask you for information from industry, that we're not asking more than the minimum needed. And also we're looking to make sure that we're not overly restrictive. Uh, but when that sources sought goes out, the information we receive back helps us to determine if there are capable small businesses that can actually do the work. So during the briefs, you will hear some of the briefers say, hey, this will be set aside, provided two or more capable small business contractors uh, respond or something to the effect to that effect. So it's important. It's not a waste of time. When you respond to those, it lets us know. It gives us the ammunition we need to support a small business set aside and fight for you. Uh, the website, we're going to provide a little bit more information on the MIC website, but it has a lot of information that you will find useful. Uh, the other thing I would say is a lot of contractors say to me, hey, I just want to be a prime. I'm not interested in subcontracting opportunities. Well, if you're not interested in subcontracting opportunities, you're, you're leaving money in the table possibly, right? Because when an action is not set up suitable or set aside for small business and is set aside to other than small business and it's more than $750,000, we require them to do a subcontracting plan. And the subcontracting plan is basically goals that we're giving them for each of the socioeconomic categories. So if something's not set aside, those large businesses are looking for capable small business contractors to subcontract to. So if you're not looking for subcontracting opportunities, you're, you're missing a, a, a great opportunity there. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so here's some don'ts of small business. Uh, the first one, it's pretty clear, right? Don't set up a meeting before you're ready. Do your homework. Be ready to talk, you know? Uh, find uh, your capability package, put that together, have it nice and neat. Uh, we do have uh, information on the uh, website, on the MIC website that provides you information on what that information should be. Uh, don't be overly aggressive and don't monopolize the conversation. What we mean by that is that if you're coming to us, we want to help you, but you have to give us that opportunity to help you. And sometimes when the contractors come in, they're so set on, hey, I want to tell you everything about me that they don't allow us to say, hey, look, I noticed this over here is missing. You might want to fix that. And we want, you know, it should be a two-way conversation so that you can also uh, get a benefit from that meeting. Uh, we don't, it doesn't matter, you know, like if you know a senior leader or uh, if you want to badmouth another company, that's not what we're in those meetings for. We're here, we're there in those meetings to hear from you and your company and what you have to provide. So please, like when we're discussing uh, actions or we're discussing opportunities, uh, let's not use that as an opportunity to, to basically browbeat uh, other companies or say, hey, I know this person or I know that person because we're looking at your company based on the merits and what it has accomplished and what their capabilities are. Uh, once the solicitation gets issued, uh, we are limited in what we can speak about. Part of that is because we don't want to give you, uh, anybody an unfair advantage. 
And if, for example, let's say you have a action that came out and it was being discussed that it was going to be LPTA. And then there's discussion uh, within the government that, hey, we're probably going to go uh, trade off on that. For example, if we if we let you know that ahead of time before everybody else knows, then that could pose an unfair advantage, particularly once the solicitation is issued out. Please, 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 when it comes to the automated marketing emails, please don't do that. You know, for us, I can tell you a lot of our small business professionals, uh, including myself, I get over 100 emails daily. And there's people that actually want to meet with us, you know, that really need our help or want to give us updated uh, uh, packages, you know, or capability packages. And if we're getting just mass marketing emails they they really fill our inbox and make it difficult to sift through all that information and i already mentioned uh the prime you know there's lots of opportunities for subcontracting so i would say take advantage of those uh one one that i really like is sba subnet so there's a website called sba subnet which i can post in the chat in a little bit uh, but that website provides opportunities. Like if you're a contractor looking for subcontract opportunities, you can post those opportunities there. Or if you're uh, looking for subcontracting opportunities by, by location, by uh, state, you can actually use that website and find opportunities that are available, which could potentially be in your industry. Next slide, please. All right, so I spoke a lot about the Dodax. So those Dodax have been posted here. Uh, they are also available in our website. So if you go to the MIC website on their small business and scroll down to contact the small business professional, we have the information there for the small business professionals and also the DODAX for each of the offices they support. And that is very helpful when you're trying to find out what, what is out there for those companies. Uh, there are some mandatory uh, use contracts that we have. For example, Ability One, once something is in the Ability One program, it must remain in, in the program. So we have some like janitorial, uh, some uh, grounds maintenance, different contracts to that effect that, you know, we can't compete those. They have to remain on the Ability program. Another one uh, that we have is Chess. So Chess is a mandatory source for all uh, information technology uh, for the Army. So we have to go through that website first to see if there's capabilities there. Uh, so if you do IT, I would definitely uh, recommend that you research how to become a chess army vendor. And uh, if you want, you can ask a question and we can post that information. I know uh, on other days people asked already, so we will be posting information on how to become a, a army chess vendor if that's something you're interested in. Next slide, please. All right, so I talked a lot about the website, so here's the link to the website. We have lots of great information there. We have a, a MIC guidebook that provides you information on doing business with the government. We also have uh, capability uh, statement information on what sh you should put in there, what it should detail. We also, every six months, we post an advanced acquisition forecast. That's a great tool to kind of see for our recurring contracts. Hey. This contract is expiring when? When does the next one come on? It's a great planning tune because you don't want to wait till the solicitation is issued and that's the first time you, you hear of that opportunity because you're going to be behind uh, the eight ball. If you can see the information and know what your NAIC, you know, know your NAICS code and you can find out when that work is going to come out next for solicitation, then it gives you the opportunity to start planning uh, early. All right, uh, next slide, please. All right, so I'll let you read that uh, on your own, but there, uh, there's the, plenty of opportunity during this event to ask for questions. So feel free and we'll try to do our best to answer them during the event. If we cannot answer them during the event, we'll post the answers after the event on sam.gov within approximately 30 days after the event is over. Uh, one of the things that I ask is that when you ask questions, please provide the slide number. That really helps us uh, to figure out what your question is about. And then also what we try to do is we pull the slide so that that way when we're talking to it, uh, everybody else can see, you know, what, what slide we're referring to and the information that we're referring to. 
So please help me out with that and uh, post this slide number and then also provide the title of the action that you're that you have a question on. All right, next slide, please. All right, so we are ready to kick things off with the four uh, presentations from 9 418th Contracting Support Brigade offices, but please uh, first, please read the following disclaimer regarding today's presentation. The information we provide today reflects things as we know them today. Information and details may change as the acquisition process move forward. Uh, next slide, please. We will begin our requirement briefings with the Mick Fort Hood office, followed by Fort Bliss and Fort Polk. Kicking it off at Mick Fort Hood is a contracting professional presenting information on the mission test support services requirement. Sir, the floor is yours. Next slide, please. Good morning, everyone. My name is Steve Schlebach. I'm the chief of the business operations division at the Mick Fort Hood contracting office. Um, I'll be briefing some of our upcoming requirements. Uh, the first one is the mission test support services requirement. Our office will be procuring services for the Te Army Test and Evaluation Command, also known as ATEC, White Sands Missile Range requirement. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis with full and open competition. A small business set aside will be considered provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support a set aside. A brief explanation of the requirement is contractor shall provide non-personal services to support the planning, logistics, provisioning, acquisition, operation, maintenance, research and development of systems, equipment and facilities for the White Sands Missile Range test and evaluation mission. Some capability requirements are the government will assess capabilities highlighting some key areas such as the following. First, mission capability, which includes program management, which is the key personnel qualifications, organizational structure and quality control and continuous process improvement. Another compo component of mission capability is cost management or the approach to reducing or controlling cost employing effective business processes and policies to perform sound fiscal stewardship over funds during contract performance. A third factor of mission capability is recruitment and retention of technical expertise. Ability to recruit and retain a workforce possessing the critical skills needed for successful performance of the contract requirements. And lastly, under mission capability would be continu continuity of operations approach and risk mitigation strategies for minimizing disruption of operations due to contract transition and assumption of workload as described in the performance work statement. A second major area would be uh, satisfactory past performance in performing the mission. Uh, thirdly, small business participation and lastly, the cost. Uh, some issues or concerns that may be considered are the contractor must be able to successfully respond to short notice changes in support requirements. Contractor must adequately support the certified skill sets for handling, storage, and transport of arms, ammunition, and explosive. We expect the uh, award date to be around the 1st of September next year, 2024, and all the other milestones at this time are to be determined. Next slide, please. So next I'll talk about the test engineering and analysis support services requirement. We'll be procuring services for ATEC, White Sands Missile Range again. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. A competitive 8A set aside will be considered provided two or more 8A companies are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support a set aside. A brief explanation of the requirement is the contractor shall provide non-personal services for test engineering analysis and support of the White Sands Missile Range mission, its tenants, and ATEC organizations. Contractor shall furnish services to include test planning, coordination, 
execution and reporting of test results, data collection, entry and analysis, engineering and technical support, software analysis, software development, data management, manpower, and personnel integration, also known as manprint, foreign national media escorts, access monitors, program management, flight safety, and systems engineering support services necessary for and incidental to the performance of requirements set forth in accordance with the performance work statement and the priorities established by the government. Some critical capability requirements are, the government will assess capabilities highlighting some key areas such as the following. First, technical expertise, which is the ability to provide technical expertise required to perform all services required by the contract as described in the performance work statement across a broad range of test and evaluation missions. Second, management, leadership, and organization. The management team's education, experience, and knowledge of DOD acquisition, regulations, processes, and a clear understanding of the research, development, tests, and evaluation mission are paramount to successful performance. Third, quality control and continuous process improvement approach. Contractor must possess the ability and processes to identify and correct issues with products and services to manage and provide the services in an efficient and effective manner and to implement processes for measuring and continually improving. Fourth, satisfactory past performance, conducting test engineering and analysis support services, and lastly, cost. Some performance issues or critical concerns are, actually it's just one, the contractor must be able to successfully respond to short notice changes and support requirements. Uh, the forecasted solicitation date is 9 August 2023, with an award anticipated in August of 2024. All other milestones are to be determined at this time. Next slide, please. The next requirement we'll be discussing is the uh, Tactical Command Control Computers and Communications, also known as C4, Support Services. Our office will be procuring services for the 3rd Armored Corps Tactical Command Control Computers and Communications Support Services requirement. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. An 8A set aside will be considered provided two or more 8A small businesses are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support a set aside. An explanation of the requirement is, Contractor shall conduct audiovisual and systems integration, maintenance, repair, replacement, installation, upgrade, fabrication, and training for both tactical and garrison C4 operations in support of three corps and its major subordinate commands, tenant organizations, and other missions supported by Fort Hood, Texas. Contractor shall provide support for tactical command posts, Tactical Operation Centers, Emergency Operation Centers, Unit Headquarters Command and Conference Rooms, other associated buildings and shelters on Fort Hood. Contractor may also be required to provide support for exercises at locations other than Fort Hood. Some critical capability requirements are, first, expertise with relevant, same or similar work related to C4 projects, comparable in size, magnitude, complexity, and scope, and related to the services and products required. Secondly, capability to provide technical support for fielding, fabrication, and installation of tactical and non-tactical audiovisual systems, video conference support, network design, data network systems, and facilities audiovisual support at various locations. And lastly, a secret facility clearance is required for this procurement. Some potential performance issues. The contractor must be able to manage multiple task orders concurrently. Requirements are time sensitive and once started must be completed without extensions or delays. Some key milestones. 
Uh, we expect to have a source of sought out approximately 17 January of 24, with the synopsis being out on the 4th of March in 24, opening the solicitation on 27 March 24, anticipate having a pre-proposal conference on 10 April of 24, and closing the solic solicitation on the 30th of April 24, and making an award around 26 July of 24. Next slide, please. Okay, next we have the electronic security systems maintenance service requirement. Uh, we had some uh, late breaking changes on this that were too late to get included in the slides. So all the dates on this one are expected to be about a year later than what we're showing here. So we'll be procuring services on behalf of the U.S. Army Garrison, Fort Hood Directorate of Emergency Services. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. A small business set aside will be considered provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support a set aside. An explanation of the requirement is, the contractor shall perform maintenance, adjustments, installation, surveying, removal, repair, replacement, system administration, and cybersecurity information assurance for electronic security systems at Fort Hood, Texas. The electronic security systems covered under the scope of this requirement are intrusion detection systems, closed circuit television systems, electronic entry control systems, and the Directorate of Emergency Services Secure Law Enforcement Network. The contractor shall ensure each ESS remains in an operational status and ensure applicable, applicable cybersecurity information assurance measures are applied in accordance with Army regulations and Department of Defense standards. Some critical capability requirements are, let me say the incumbent contract was awarded on a sole source basis. For the follow on effort, the government will assess capabilities highlighting some key areas such as the following. First, all contractor personnel maintaining, servicing, inst installing, repairing hardware and software of the IDS or EECS shall be certified as a monitor dynamics trained technician or systems administrator, depending on services provided for the uh, integrated commercial intrusion detection systems or ICIDS 2 system. And secondly, a secret facility clearance is required for this procurement. Some a potential performance issue. Contractor must be able to manage multiple task orders concurrently. Requirements are all time sensitive and once started must be completed without extensions or delays. Key milestones. Sources sought 11 December 23. Of course, again, all this is probably going to be about a year later. Um, so the solicitation will probably be around April of 25 and a contract award in June of 25. Next slide, please. So next we have the administrative and logistics support requirement. We'll be procuring services for the Research and Analysis Center, U.S. Army Futures Command at White Sands Missile Range also known as Track Whismer. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. A small business set aside will be considered, provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support a set aside. A brief explanation of the requirement is, the Track White Sands Missile Range is one of four sub-elements of track headquarters located at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. The contractor shall provide specific technical requirements for logistics mission support. The support spans a wide range of logistics tasks to include supply operations, inventory, receiving and turn-in, hazardous material disposal, and official mail distribution. Support also providing recommendations 
Our support also includes providing recommendations and lessons learned and the development of logistics and administrative support policies and procedures. Track Wismer serves as the analytical center and is a major subordinate organization of TRADOC located at Fort Monroe, Virginia. Track Wismer is a highly skilled thinking organization that conducts relevant analysis on current and potential military operations worldwide to inform decision makers about the most challenging issues facing the U.S. Army and Department of Defense. Critical capability requirements are, first, contractor must possess a secret facility clearance from the Defense Security Service prior to contract start date. Second, the contractor must have a supply technician who has two or more years experience performing supply operations, inventory, receiving and equipment turn-ins, formal hazardous material training, and proficient in Microsoft Word, Excel, and Access. Some potential performance issues or past concerns. The contractor will be required to make day trips to Fort Bliss and Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico, to support the track Wismer forward operations and property turn-in operations at the Defense Reutilization and Marketing Office at the Holloman Office. Uh, we're anticipating the solicitation to be out in the first part of September of 24 with an award in October of 2024. Next slide, please. And lastly, we have the automatic door preventive maintenance services requirement. The MIG Fort Hood Contracting Office will be procuring services for the U.S. Army Garrison Fort Hood Directorate of Public Works automatic door maintenance requirement. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis and a small business set aside will be considered provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable to perform the requirement with the information sufficient to support a set aside. The explanation of the requirement is the contractor shall perform preventive maintenance and repair work on automatic sliding doors and automatic push button swing doors. The requirement encompasses approximately 129 automatic doors located in approximately 34 facilities throughout the Fort Hood installation. Facilities where these automatic doors are located may include headquarters buildings, office buildings, gyms, retail establishments within the Fort Hood installation. Buildings with automatic doors may be added or removed from this contract due to construction or new facilities, renovation of existing facilities, or demolition of facilities. Critical capability requirements are, first, demonstration of a minimum of five years experience in conducting preventive maintenance, repair, or replacement of automatic doors. Secondly, satisfactory past performance conducting preventive maintenance, repair, or replacement of automatic doors. A potential performance issue, the contractor must be able to manage scheduled and unscheduled performance concurrently. Requirements are time sensitive and once started must be completed without extensions or delays. Key milestones, sources sought, 6 February, 2024. Synopsis, 8 April 2024. Solicitation opening, 29 April 2024. Pre-proposal conference, 9 May 2024. Solicitation closing, 30 May 2024. And contract award, 1 August 2024. And this concludes the Fort Hood requirements. Thank you. Thank you so much. Next slide, please. Up next is Fort Bliss. Fort Bliss, floor is yours. Next slide. Good morning, everyone. My name is Bruce Hayes, and I'm a procurement analyst with the 418th Contracting Support Brigade, briefing the requirements for Fort Bliss, Texas. I'll be presenting six requirements that are anticipated to be acquired in 2023 and 2024. First of all, I'd like to set the ground rules just a little bit. For every vendor, we'll be required to have a current SAM registration. Ensure your company's information is accurate, current, and up to date. And this also includes your representations and certifications. Number two, you're asked to read the solicitation in its entirety as you do not want to miss any documents the, the government is asking you to provide. 
pay to provide this information stated in the solicitation could render your offer uh, unresponsive and not be accepted or considered by the government. Third, attend the site visit if offered. It's in your best interest to do so. If an opportunity to ask questions is provided, please ensure you do so by the date and time mentioned in the solicitation. And please remember to submit your best offer up front. Okay, Master Leader Course Facilitators is our first slide. The contractor shall provide personnel to facilitate the Master Leader Course Distributed Learning Curriculum using the Blackboard platform. Um, facilitation duties will uh, occur on the non-commissioned officer leadership center of excellence campus on East Fort Bliss. The contractor shall be responsible for providing personnel management necessary to conduct the courseware facilitation to the master leader course development learning. The master leader course development learning is a six week online synchronous facilitator led course. The maximum capacity is 16 students, but the minimum, I apologize, the minimum capacity is 16 students and the maximum is 32 students. The government will provide the contractor a minimum of 60 days written notification prior to the start of the class. The duration, the contract currently is set for a base year plus two one year options for a total contract duration of three years. Okay, what are our critical capabilities? Contractors responsible for providing the course between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, except federal holidays when the government facility is closed or due to local national emergencies or weather. The contractor must at all times maintain an adequate workforce, ensuring uninterrupted performance. The contractor personnel performing work under this contract shall have a national agency check inquiry, which is NACI, at the time of proposal submission and be entered in the Joint Personnel Adjudication or JPAS system. All personnel employed as, as instructors shall be deemed as subject matter experts in the field in which they will be instructing. All instructors shall at a minimum have obtained the rank of Master Sergeant or Service Equivalent. The NAICS for this one under consideration is 611 Professional and Management um, Developmental Training, size standard, small business size standard is 15 million. The current small business category is an 8A and this is a follow on requirement. So what are performance or other concerns? All personnel employed by the contractor to perform under this contract shall possess basic computer skills to include Microsoft Office, be either facility development program one and two certified or attend the 80 hour combined facility development instructor course. Facilitators must also possess online qualifications that include the self-placed Blackboard Basics 101 instructor uh, training course, 45 hour asynchronous distributive learning instructor course and other courses identified in the PWS. Next slide, please. Our second slide is to perform ground maintenance at specific locations throughout the Fort Bliss Military Reservation. The contractor shall, shall inspect, service, maintain the landscape grounds at Fort Bliss Reservation. The work shall include scheduling, performance of mowing and trimming, turf replacement, leaf and debris removal, tree, hedge and shrub planting, maintenance, irrigation and fertilization, policing of areas, trees and stump removal and other associated work. Additionally, the work will include applying fertilizer or lime, applying herbicide to lawn and landscape areas, maintaining athletic fields, plants, shrubs and flowers and performing seasonal planting of plants and flowers, removal of leaves, applying mulch, pruning trees, removing grass from cracks and sidewalks and pavements and litter control. The contractor shall provide for tree preservation and protection during all maintenance and other activities. The contractor shall ensure all work accomplished maintains the and presents a healthy, clean, neat and professional appearance to all grounds including and covered by this contract in support of the mission requirements for users, residents and visitors. It anticipated that there will be a one month phasing period for this requirement. The procurement method anticipated is request for proposals. Source selection will be lowest price technically acceptable. We anticipate a base year plus four one year options, which is a total contract duration of five years. 
Under critical capability requirements, the basis for award is the government will award a contract resulting from the solicitation to the responsible offer whose offer conforming to the solicitation will be most advantageous to the government, price and other factors considered. The award will be made to the lowest priced offer that the contracting officer has determined as acceptable in both perf past performance and technical areas. To be eligible for the award, the proposal must meet all past performance and technical requirements, conform to all the requirements and terms and conditions set forth in the solicitation, and include all information required in the solicitation. The proposal shall contain the offer's best offer from a cost, price, and technical standpoint. The government may reject any proposal that is evaluated and determined to be unacceptable, fails to conform to the contract terms and conditions, or is excessively high or low in cost or price. We're looking at a NAICS of 561730, which is landscaping and groundskeeping, small business size standard to 7.5 million. The category is 8A, and this is a follow-on requirement. How about performance issues or other concerns of the government? Technical acceptability criteria includes project manager, has at least three years of supervisory experience on projects of similar type and magnitude of work within the past five years. Staffing and equipment plan demonstrates a general knowledge of the effort and the equipment needed to successfully execute the contract requirements. Submission of a copy of the Texas Department of Agricultural Commercial Pesticide Applicator License for Category 3-A plan, pest and weed control is required. Submission of your irrigation or irrigator's license for Texas and New Mexico or submission of documentation that demonstrates the offeror's ability to obtain these license by the 15th day of phase in. Concerns. Equipment is in good operating condition. We're concerned about the hiring and maintenance at the appropriate labor mixes and schedule timelines based on seasonal requirements. Next slide, please. Our next slide has to do with performance of custodial services at specific locations throughout Fort Bliss military installation. The explanation of the requirement is DPW at Fort Bliss, Texas has a requirement for custodial services for its facilities located on Fort Bliss. Briggs Army Airfield, which is East Biggs, William Beaumont Army Medical Center, and the surrounding area training areas in El Paso to include Dora Anna, McGregor, and Ostero counties in the state of New Mexico. The contractor shall provide all personnel, equipment, supplies, facilities, transportation tools, materials, supervision, and non-personal services necessary to perform the required services for the Department of Public Works areas of responsibility. The objective is to provide a clean, healthy environment for its occupants, users, and visitors to facilities identified to receive custodial services. These custodial services consist of three levels of cleaning, frequency, and provisions identified in the performing work statement, which result in sustainment of current and future mission requirements. The requirement has been accepted by the Small Business Administration under the 8A program and will remain so until released by them is anticipated that there will be a one month phase in period for this requirement. The procurement method currently being proposed is request for proposals. Source selection will be lowest price technically acceptable and the duration of the contract is expected to be a base year plus four one year options for a total contract duration of five years. Critical capabilities. Basis for award. The government intends to award one contract as a result of this solicitation. A war will be made to a single offer who is deemed responsible in accordance with the federal acquisition regulation, whose proposal conforms to the solicitation requirements, and whose proposal judged by the overall assessment of the evaluation criteria and other considerations specified in the solicitation represent the lowest price technically acceptable offeror. The government may reject any proposal that is evaluated and deemed to be unacceptable, fails to comply with the current terms and conditions, or is excessive in high or excessively low in cost and price. It is the government's intention to award without discussions. Offers are encouraged to present their best technical proposal and prices in their initial proposal submission. The next we're considering is 561720, which is janitorial services, 
small business supply standard is 18 million. The small business category remains in the 8A program, and this is a follow on requirement. Some of the performance issues or other concerns that the government have technical acceptability, management and organizational plan, staffing and workforce management plan, and supply chain management and equipment allocation plan. Our concerns are hiring and maintaining the appropriate number of employees and labor mixes, acquiring the ability and maintaining a viable supply chain and meeting the schedule requirements. Next slide, please. Our next uh, procurement is perform maintenance and repair of washers and dryers at specific locations throughout the Fort Bliss military complex and reservation. This is a service contract to provide skilled personnel, equipment, supplies, facilities, transportation, to include tools, materials, and supervision needed to perform maintenance and repair on government-owned coin-free washers and dryers at Fort Bliss in all outlying areas stated and identified in the performance work statement. The contractor shall perform recurring maintenance and repair activities and respond to service costs to keep the government's inventory functioning properly throughout the Fort Bliss Military Reservation community. The services for this contract are needed in order to maintain approximately 2,815 machines. We expect to procure it through a request for quotations. The source selection is anticipated to be lowest price technically acceptable, and the duration is a base year plus four one-year options for a total contract duration of five years. Critical capacity and capability requirements. This requirement will be solicited as a combined synopsis solicitation for commercial items slash services. The basis of award, the government will award a contract resulting from the solicitation to the responsible offer whose offer conforming to the solicitations will be most advantageous to the government concerning price and other factors. Following factors shall be used to evaluate the offer submission. Pricing. Certifications, you have to have a National Appliance Service Technician Certificate. Performance, uh, past performance will be evaluated, your staffing plan will be evaluated, and your performance plan will be evaluated. The plan shall address how the contractor will go about management and managing and performing daily operations for approximately 2,815 washers and dryers throughout the reservation. Technical and past performance when combined are considered significantly more important than cost and price. And the government may determine that an offer is unacceptable if the prices that are offered are significantly unbalanced. The government intends to make an award without discussions. However, the government does retain the right to conduct negotiations and discussions if deemed in the best interest of the government. The two NAICS codes that have been looked at are the first one is 811310 commercial and industrial machine and equipment which would have a size standard of 12.5 million or 811412, which is appliance and repair maintenance, which is a size standard of 15 million. Small business category anticipated to be solicited as 100% small business set aside. And this indeed is a follow on requirement. Performance issues or other concerns the government may have under the technical considerations, management and maintenance of the volume of washers and dryers on a timely basis, staffing and management plan, and supply chain management. Concerns, hiring and maintaining the appropriate number of employees and labor mixes, ability to acquire and maintain a viable supply chain for repair parts, and meeting scheduled maintenance requirements. Next slide, please. The next one is forklift rental and maintenance services, also located on the Fort Bliss Military Reservation. Contractors shall provide all personnel, equipment, supplies, facilities, transportation, tools, materials, and supervision to perform forklift rental and maintenance services at Westbrook McGregor Base Camp, New Mexico, and Biggs Army Airfield at Fort Bliss in Texas. The, the Director of Plans, Training, and Mobilization at Fort Bliss Mobilization Brigade have a requirement for forklift rental and maintenance in support of contingency operations for mobilization and demobilization units. Forklifts are considered critical 
for warehouse daily operations and bunker snake pit missions. The objective of this contract is to provide both scheduled and unscheduled maintenance for forklifts, allowing the Army to meet contingency operations for mobilization and need mobilization units. Method of procurement, last time it was bid through the units and marketplace. The duration is a base plus three one-year options for a total contract duration of four years. However, it is more likely that this will turn into a five-year contract. Type contract will be a firm fixed price contract under indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity or IDIQ. Critical capability requirements. We're concerned about providing the number and various sizes of forklifts required for this um, requirement. Performing quality and timing maintenance to ensure the forklifts are operational at all times. The previous procurement for the services was completed by placing a um, Solicitation on the units and marketplace, however, this does not mean that the government will again choose to acquire the services on unison. Market research indicates that this procurement is suitable for women-owned small business set aside, however, that has not yet been determined but is being considered. The next code for this consideration is 532490, other commercial and industrial machinery and equipment rental and leasing, size standard at 35 million, small business category for this one will be 100% small business set aside, and it is a follow on contract. We do have some concerns and issues under the technical realm. All forklifts shall be new or used, but not older than eight years and cannot be refurbished. All forklifts shall be equipped with working horn, backup alarm, seat belt, safety harnesses, brakes, emergency brakes, lights, must have a fire extinguisher and hazard lights. Forklifts, type of forklifts we're looking for are three to six K, shall be equipped with 48 to 72 inches in width by four, six feet in length minimum forks attachments. The telehandler forklifts 8K, 43 inches reach, shall be equipped with 72, 96 inches in width by seven feet in length forks attachments. The telehandler forklifts 10K, 43 inch reach, shall be equipped with 48 inches in width by eight feet in length forks attachments. And the ability to repair and maintain all forklifts in good operational condition throughout the life of the contract. Concerns. Hiring and maintaining the appropriate number of employees and labor mixes to perform these services. Ability to acquire and maintain a viable supply chain for obtaining the right size of the forklifts. The ability to quickly make repairs as needed and obtaining repairs parts and meeting scheduled maintenance requirements. And my final contract that we're expecting to put out is curriculum developers for the distributive learning course. Next slide, please. As I said, this is a curriculum developers for distributive learning course levels one through four at its specified locations throughout the Fort List military reservation. The contractors shall provide all personnel and supervision necessary to perform as curriculum developers for the NCO Leadership Center of Excellence. Fort Bliss in Texas. The contractor shall create, revise, review lesson content in the NCO PME learning curriculum, lesson plans, storyboards, assessment, development, and other aspects of this course. The objective of the course is to provide the NCOL, COE, CDNE division with professional and experienced curriculum developers. Contractors must have experience with the Army Foundation Instructor Facilitator course or its equivalent, Instructor Facilitator Skills course or its equivalent, Facility Development Program Levels 1 through 3, and Systems Approach to Training Basics course or its equivalent. The method of procurement, again, this one was solicited under the Unison Marketplace. That does not mean that it will be done so uh, for this particular requirement. The duration is a base year plus two one-year options for a total duration of three years. However, it could be anticipated that a five-year contract for this one also will be procured. It is anticipated to be a firm fixed price contract under indefinite delivery and definite quantity type contract. Critical capabilities and requirements. Contract employees shall be proficient in the Army system approach to training and five-phased approach to educational development. 
Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation, all known as ADDI. That's the acronym used for that term. Instructors must have a bachelor's degree at a minimum. The preferred degree will be in education, curriculum development design, adult education, educational technology, instructional design, instructional technology, English, creative writing or technical writing. Must have Blackboard 101 and 102 experience. Curriculum development certifications such as facility development program level three or developer must graduate from the NCO L C O E F D P series courses. And you must be able to demonstrate proficiency in writing APA version six style. The previous procurement, like I said, was done on the Unison Marketplace. However, this does not mean the government will again choose to acquire the services through the Unison Marketplace. Market research indicates the procurement is suitable for 100% small business set aside. The next consideration for this uh, procurement is 61. 1430 professional and management development training. Size standard is 12 million. Small business category is 100% small business set aside, and this is a follow on requirement. Technical considerations meet or exceed the PWS requirements. Uh, qualified staffing and the required education and experience qualifications are of concern to the government. Other concerns are hiring and retaining the appropriate number of qualified employees. The availability, avail, pardon me, the uh, ability to develop and maintain curriculum documentation as required by the performance work statement and meeting scheduled requirements. This concludes my briefing. Thank you for your time and attention. All right, next slide, please. Thank you so much. Up next is for Polk. For Polk, floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Trinidad. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Chris Pritchard. I will be the procure procurement analyst uh, for the next three requirement slides, and I'm I'm broadcasting to you from the home of heroes, the Joint Readiness Training Center, beautiful Fort Polk, Louisiana. Our first requirement is the visual information services. The MIG Fort Polk contracting office will be procuring services for the dual command, uh, so both installation management and forces command requirement. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive small business set aside basis. A description of the requirement for visual information services. This is a non-personal services contract to provide the Directorate of Plans, Training, Mobilization and Security, the DPTMS from Installation Management Command and the Training Division from Forces Command, visual information services. So a great example, a current example of some of the requirements that this that this contract is meeting. Uh, we've all been to the movie theater and as you're walking up to the movie theater, uh, you know, you see the posters outside of the current shows and maybe a few upcoming shows. It's one of our it's one of our favorite things to do here in the in the Vernon Parish area is attend those attend those movies. Well, the the training center has come up with a creative idea to respect the efforts of these units coming through the training center as well as the training staff. Uh, all over the installation, both at the operations group command building and our headquarters building here on Fort Polk, you'll see movie theater posters that represent uh, current and past rotations uh, that, that the folks have, the units have come through here and, and completed. So, so it's kind of a neat requirement. It's a great way to respect uh, all of the efforts by the staff and the training units here. Uh, an upcoming requirement, uh, as some of you may know, uh, Fort Polk is is looking to have its name changed to Fort Johnson here uh, in, in a very near in very near future. We're all excited about that change, uh, but with that change comes comes many things. One of which is all of our backdrops for for many of our VTC briefings, um, posters and banners all over the installations will will need to be changed from Fort Polk to Fort Johnson. Uh, it is highly likely that this contract will be utilized. Uh, to ensure that a lot of that gets gets updated and gets changed to the proper name. So we're all looking forward to that. Uh, so concerns uh, of the government for for this contract is, and I'd mentioned it before, there's there's two commands um, that are kind of sharing this requirement, installation management and forces command. Uh, it, with that, both of those commands have to staff uh, through their through their headquarters uh, what they believe the requirement should entail and who's going to be, be the bill payer for that. So 
so we get to the point where as they're staffing through there and, and they've got to come to an agreement um, that sometimes may slow the process for resolicitation. And so that follows us right into the uh, to the milestones uh, on this slide. They happen to be incorrect. We were just notified that we are going to execute a dash eight or a six month extension of the current contract um, that, that came after the publishing of these slides. So I apologize. It looks as though the, the re-procurement will be done now November, uh, December, as we experience that eight month extension. Um, it, it, there is potential even still for this requirement to split and have uh, MCOM with their own requirement and forces command with their own, own requirement. Uh, as you can see that the previous source selection was done under a, a lowest price technically acceptable and the next code is 512110 motion picture and video production. Next slide please. Our paving and drainage requirement. McPulk Contracting Office will be procuring services for an MCOM requirement. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive 8A basis. A uh, brief description of the requirement here. The contractor is to execute repairs and new construction of pavement, infrastructure, drainage, uh, and various locations in the Fort Polk area to include the maneuver area, what we, what we all know as the box, the training area, and airfields within. Uh, some some great examples of what's going on current requirement. Uh, Fort Polk was was identified as an installation um, to be to be uh, utilized under the Quality of Life Initiative. And folks, I can promise you, if you've been to Louisiana and you're driving around on Louisiana roads and you run into a six foot wide pothole uh, with your small car, you will be questioning the quality of your life. Uh, so here on the installation, I can tell you roads have become a priority and we've done some excellent work here uh, in, in the recent past. Um, and, and it really does make a difference on the installation. We've got some of the best, uh, some of the best engineers, program managers and CORs in our, in, our, uh, in our DPW here that you would be working with. And uh, uh, some of the concerns on this rotation, or excuse me, this, this requirement would be uh, currently, the requirement, as you can see in the in the milestones or the pop, this, this current requirement is a three year requirement, so base in two option years. We're looking to extend that on the next solicitation to be a base in four option years, so a total of five. Uh, some of the concerns may be that the, the materials and the validity of materials within this requirement um, could, could turn, into, turn into cost drivers or concerns of the risk for the contractors. We are working closely. Uh, with our with our partners in DPW to ensure that the solicitation meets all those requirements. Uh, the the ordering dates are accurate on that, so we're looking for for this solicitation to to be done around uh, one November 2023. So coming right up this year or next fiscal year. Next slide, please. Lastly, the vent hoods requirement. The Fort Polk Contracting Office will be procuring services for an MCOM requirement. The intention is to provide these or to procure these services on a competitive small business set aside. A brief description of the requirement. The director, uh, director of Public Works requirement is for cleaning and inspection of commercial kitchen vent hoods and inspection also of the fire systems associated with those vent hoods. Um, hey folks, just as Colonel, uh, Colonel Griffith had mentioned before, we saved the best for last. Uh, and, and if you're talking about vent hoods, then you're talking about food and that definitely fits in my best category. So um, th this requirement is is known for you've got your commercial vent hoods here at a, uh, several defects here on Fort Polk. Um, and we've got the contractor, although it be a smaller requirement just over the, the sat is definitely it is a safety related requirement. And so therefore uh, it is extremely important that uh, that not only we keep these cooks safe, but that we keep the uh, keep the chow line moving so that so that we can all be fed. Um, I don't have any current concerns concerns, excuse me, that were provided by by the customer on this requirement. Uh, and we do look for the for the pop and ordering periods uh, to to maintain what we have on the slide. So forecasted solicitation date looks to be coming out 15 July of 2024. Uh, the previous source selection was done through reverse auction uh, at a NAICS code of 561790, other services to buildings and dwellings. 
that is all the slides that I have for Fort Polk. I appreciate your time. Thank you. I'll hand it back to uh, Mr. Trinidad or the administrator for this briefing. Hey, thank you so much. Great job, Mick team. We will now entertain questions from the chat. Right, so I'm pulling over the questions now. OK, there were some questions on the Army chess brought up again, uh, Army chess vendor. So I kind of researched that one for you while, while people were briefing. And the Army chess is managed by the Program Executive Office Enterprise Information Systems, PEOIS. Uh, their website is www.eis.army.mil. And in their website, they do have links to upcoming opportunities. So I'll give you a direct link to that. Uh, and when I went in there, they do have several eye test requirements. So I'll post that in the answer to that question uh, that was sent. Uh, so hopefully you'll be able to see it. OK, there was a question on slide 22. Could we go back to slide 22? Mr. Slaybach, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. OK, so the question on slide 22, are there plans to use ITEST 3S for this effort? Or will there be a solicitation issued on SAM? I don't know the answer to that, so we will have to get that answer. OK. All right, well, I see that it's 8A competitive, so typically with 8A, actions we we do not have to process those through itest 3s so i would assume that we probably would be releasing a solicitation through sam.gov uh, there was another question uh, mr slayback that came out on slide 23 could we go to that slide real quick uh they just wanted to confirm the dates they said uh just to confirm uh that it will uh IDS will not be up for competition until FY25. Yes, we are uh, anticipating approximately a one year delay. So all these dates currently shown would be moved forward by okay. approximately one year. OK, thank you so much. Yes, sir. All right, we also had a question on slide 28. Uh, Bruce, are you available? I am here. All right, great. Uh, can we go to slide 28? And the question was, will GSA be used for competition again, or will there be a solicitation release on SAM? That has not yet been determined. They are looking at uh, both options, but that one has not yet been determined. OK, so we are still on the market research phase on that one and have not made a final decision. Uh, the other one, I think I can answer that one. Slide 29. Uh, so if you see, it, it says that the current contract was set aside as an 8A sole source. And one of the contractors was very astute, noticed that it uh, it said sole source, but the dollar amount is uh, greater than the sole source threshold. And yes, that is correct. I went and looked this contract up on FPDS, the website I told you about, cut and pasted uh, the information, uh, the contract number. And it pulled out slides or it put out the contract action report, which indicates that this was a competitive 8A and offers were received from four offers. So that's what I was able to get right to the public available information. So if you guys aren't using it, you should use it. It's very, it's very, very useful. Uh, just to let you know, whenever you put a contract number on FPDS on that Google search bar tool, uh, post it in with no dashes. OK, uh, there was one more question, Bruce. I don't know if you happen to know this one, but do you know how pest control is being procured at Fort Bliss? No, I do not. OK, I can tell you that I, I did look at uh, FPDS just to see if there were any NACE codes associated with pest control that had been awarded out of that particular office. And the last award I could find uh, with anything related to pest control was in 2006. So they may be going to another uh, agency for that or it may they may possibly be partnering uh with the city to do those services uh so mcom does have several uh igsas intergovernmental support agreements so it's possible that they've established one for those services as we do not have uh, have not awarded any uh since oh, 2006. all right welcome back everybody 
So we're doing great on time. Uh, before we pick back up, I just wanted to do a couple of administrative comments. Uh, we did post uh, in the chat, we did post the ability to provide uh, sur a survey. We'd love to have your comments. I looked uh, during the break and we have received a few comments and responses. Uh, we do look at every single one of your responses and comments, and this this is a helpful tool for us to prepare for future events. So please, if you haven't taken the time yet uh, at the end or uh, whenever you get a chance that we would appreciate it if you do fill the, the survey. Another thing I wanted to let you know is that we do our best uh, to get slides that are as accurate as possible. But of course, we are dealing with moving targets here. So things do change. And, uh, you know, I love to be able to catch everything, but sometimes we miss things. There's actions that come out at the last minute because of changes that happen to the acquisition or cancellations to the requirement. And then at other times we try to add slides towards the end that, uh, hey, this is a great opportunity that just came up. We we finally have a package from the customer. Let's go ahead and post this. So there's a lot of movement going on behind the scenes and a lot of work dedicated by our folks to ensure that you, know, you get this event uh, for you today. So hopefully it's something that you find useful. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so we will now pick back up on the requirement presentation. I believe Carson is having connectivity issues right now, so we're going to skip them and go to four. Oh, oh, you're there. OK, great, great. Rock. Awesome. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and pick back up with uh, Fort Carson. Floor is yours. Hey, morning, team. Uh, my name is Major Brad Heinley. I'm the installation deputy division chief at Mick Fort Carson. Uh, we're going to be talking the solid waste collection at Pinion Canyon requirement. So Mick Carson is procuring, look, looking to procure services for the Department of Public Works requirement. Intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. A small business set aside will be considered provided two or more small businesses are, are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support the set aside. So this requirement is to provide all necessary management, supervision, personnel, materials, transportation, general and specialized tools, equipment required to accomplish all refuse collection and off post disposal services for the Pinion Canyon maneuver site. Uh, there are no active landfills on Pinion Canyon, so services will be varied based on the training requirements for Fort Carson and the troop training usage. Uh, some of the critical capabilities we're looking for, government will assess capabilities highlighting some of the key areas. Uh, such as maximum flexibility as refuse removal service will be on an as needed basis. Performance will be irregular and really depends on training exercises, duration and scope, as well as troop rotations through the area. Services may be required Saturday, Sundays, federal holidays, uh, and performance may include multiple pickups on the same day. And this requirement also includes the delivery of recyclable products to the local recycle center. Pinion Canyon is not a top secret facility, but it is controlled access. As this is a training area, service may be interrupted if there's a live mission going on, if it's required, and commercial driver's license will be required for all their operators. Uh, performance concerns most important to our mission partner is timeliness of response when services are requested and reliability in service when the dates are known in advance. Some of the key milestones for this requirement uh, will be requesting for proposals on 30 June. That will close on 3 August. We anticipate awarding no later than 8 September with a period performance starting at 25 September. Pending your questions, that's all I have. Thank you. All right, up next is Fort Riley. Fort Riley, the floor is yours. Next slide, please. Uh, good morning, team. Uh, Sergeant First Class Casey here. I'm KO for the Mick Fort Riley. Uh, installation support division. Big Fort Riley contract and apples will be procuring services for the 1ID commanding generals mounted color guard farrier service requirement. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. A small business set aside will be considered provided two or more small businesses are deemed able to perform the requirement with information sufficient to port a set aside. For the farrier service, the contractor will provide the horse detachment with 12 months of scheduled farrier services. The instruction per year with four optional years. Service and instruction will consist of shoeing, hoofing, 
trimming of up to 23 head of horses and two mules. Contractor will provide eight hours per week of detailed instruction in the uh, some of the requirements for the farrier service is that the farrier is certified and accredited and requires several years of experience in farrier service. A primary concern of the government is increasing competition with this requirement. However, the skills required are difficult to find in a close proximity to Fort Riley. Farrier shall have a minimum of 25 years of professional experience in proper trimming techniques, sizing, shaping, and application of shoes to show expertise and the ability to not cause harm to the horses as well as previously trained hoof care. Uh, next slide, please. Our next requirement is to support the Director of Public Works, the DPW, and their solvent cleaning services. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. This requirement is very difficult for small business to get involved with due to the storing, transporting, and disposal of hazardous waste and solvents. The past three contracts dating back to 2011 have been awarded to large businesses. Fort Riley has nearly 300 parts cleaner devices and has been supported under the contract since 2012. The contract will provide routine services of both contractor provided and customer owned parts cleaning devices. Services will include cleaning, servicing, maintaining associated equipment with the handling and transportation of industrial waste. Additionally, this contract relieves the customer of the requirement to facilitate hazardous waste management associated with this requirement, including accountability, transportation, recycling, storage, and reporting. Fort Riley performs maintenance activities on military services that include the generation of used antifreeze. The used antifreeze is generated in individual maintenance motor pools and transported in 55 gallon drums to the hazardous material processing center located at building 1930 at Camp Funston. Approximately 6,000 gallons of used antifreeze is generated over the course of each year. Some of the critical capabilities are obtaining the necessary licenses, certification, and permits that comply with all applicable federal, state, and local and municipal laws. Next slide, please. Uh, for Riley's office, we'll be procuring DPD services for custodial. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis, and a small business set aside will be considered, provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable to perform this requirement. Informa uh, information sufficient to support this set aside will be decided. In the past, these services have been uh, on a competitive 8A uh, solicitation. The contractor will provide custodial services in approximately 119 buildings, encompassing a little more than 1 million square feet of floor area, including eight child and youth development facilities, 70 administrative facilities, 12 high use administrative and community facilities, 13 training and education facilities, and 16 other facilities, including the 1st Infantry Division headquarters, the U.S. Army Garrison headquarters, and the Area Support Operations Squadron headquarters. The contractor employees working at the CYS facilities will require a chemical, a criminal history background checks, an annual training on child abuse prevention, identification and reporting, and specific immunizations before being allowed to work in these facilities. Any contractor employee in the headquarters building must possess a government issued photo identification card, such as a driver's license, in order to exchange for a temporary visitor badge at the security desk in the lobby. The base years of these services in the past have been a challenge. We plan to implement a longer phase in process to help facilitate a smoother transition. Next slide, please. Combative trainings. This is our final requirement at Mick Fort Riley office will be procuring for the services, the one day one ID combative requirement. The intention is to procure these services on a competitive basis. 
A small business set aside will be considered provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable of performing the requirement with information sufficient to support a set aside. Physical readiness combatives instructors requirement consists of furnishing all management, labor, equipment, materials, and transportation necessary to perform physical readiness combatives training at Fort Riley, Kansas, in support of various 1st Infantry Division units undergoing training and certification at Fort Riley. Combatives training is essential defense and offense physical training conditioning for all the United States soldiers. It is a requirement for the 1st Infantry Division units to have combatives instructors trained to instruct basic and tactical combatives. This training is required by Army Regulation AR 350-1, Army Training and Leader Development, and Fort Riley Regula Regulation FR 350-1. Each company sized element must have one tactical combative certified instructor. These requirements are listed in the training circular TC 3-25.150 combatives. Additionally, the Army is implementing a fundamental change in the way it trains physical fitness in our unit's physical training program to better optimize our soldiers' fitness to improve the readiness of our formations. The functional fitness aspect of this contract will assist in the physical preparing of soldiers in the full spectrum of fitness required by the rigors of combat. Instructors will require multiple qualifications. Some of those include the U.S. Army Combatives Master Trainer Certification, Experience in instructing and training levels one and two combatives, certification at least one of the following competencies, personal trainer, group fitness, exercise instructor, sports conditioning or strength and conditioning, certification may be accredited by either the National Convention of Certifying Agencies or the Distance Education Accrediting Commission. The combatives master instructor will be certified by the proponent for the combatives training of the United States Infantry School at Fort Benning, Georgia. This concludes the requirements for Fort Riley. Pending your questions on the question and answer section. Thank you very much and have a great day. All right, thank you. Uh, next slide, please. Up next is Yuma Proving Ground. Yuma, floor is yours. Good morning. My name is Karen Davis and I'm a contract specialist at Yuma Proving Ground and I'll be briefing the next four requirements for our contracting office. Before we jump into our slides, I'd like to share with you unique mission and some information about the areas surrounding the Proving Ground. YPG's primary mission is to conduct tests on medium and long range artillery aircraft target acquisition equipment and armaments, including a variety of munitions. The Proving Ground is located approximately 30 miles from Yuma and consists of approximately 838,000 acres, over 13 square miles, and has 200 or 2,203 buildings or structures. The landscape around us consists of some improved grounds and desert landscape. Yuma averages an annual rainfall of 3.2 inches with summer temperatures ranging from 106 to 120 degrees. With sub freezing weather, it's occasional during the winter months. Nine months out of the year, our weather is sunny and, and beautiful. YPG's core hours are 6 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Thursday, with the exception of federal holidays and administrative closing. YPG and most of Arizona observes Mountain Standard Time all year long. Yuma is located two and a half hours out of San Diego, two and a half hours out of Phoenix, three hours out of Tucson. We sit next to a major freeway, which makes traveling easy, whichever way you go. We do have an airline that comes in from other major airports, and there's a wealth of activity in the area from sand dunes, river, lakes, Mexico, Vegas, California. Um, there's shopping in the major cities that just a few hours away. California's right next to us. Um, culture activities, hiking, biking, jeeping, 
and all kinds of four wheeling. Um, walking is very popular out here and we have beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Our first requirement for YPG is to procure services for Army Test Evaluation Command or ATEC is Tropic Test Support Services. This contract was previously full and open and it will also be procured previous, uh, excuse me, procured full and open. The place of performance should show on the slide is Panama and Suriname. And it also states that it's a possible consolidation. It will not be, it will go by itself. The Tropic Test Center's mission is to plan and conduct tropic environmental development tests at unique tropical microclimate sites, both within the CONUS remote and OCONUS locations in Australia, French Guyana, Guam, Honduras, Panama, and Suriname. Provide tests of, and training of wide variety of military electronic systems, material weapons and equipment of all conceivable types, sizes, configurations, and uses. The contractor shall perform tests, engineering, and technical services, special studies, and technical tasks in the appropriate environmental and climate. The services include test planning, coordination, execution, data analysis, and test cost estimating and reporting on a wide variety of tests, such as natural, environmental tropic testing, vehicle verification testing, environmental exposure testing, and tropical medicine testing at tropical test locations. The unique combination of tropic microclimate available at test sites means the individual needs of each customer shall be flexibly met and programs are conducted at locations appropriate for each test where conditions are realistic and the test requirements are met. These activities include supporting scientific, engineering, and other technical support activities related to the research, development, test, and evaluation of material systems over a wide range of engineering disciplines. The government will assess capabilities, highlighting some key areas such as the following. Has your company done any work outside the country? Does your company have any in country in-country contacts to maintain the relationships? How will the current infrastructure be maintained to minimize disruption during the transition to a new contractor? Project management is also a critical area of this requirement due to being OCONUS. We will be looking at how the company intends to satisfy the project management aspect regarding hiring and retention of key personnel. The program schedules, cost containment, meeting and tracking performance, risk management, and the day-to-day -day management of a contract of this complexity. Some of the areas of concern and program issues of this contract are no military support, no logistic support, language and local economy, dealing with the embassy, testing in the tropical environment, health and safety in a foreign country. Amenities in the area are not always available and are not always desirable. Testing in a natural environment often exposes performance deficiencies that our artificial simulation methods fail to expose. The testing at the Tropic Test Center, which are characterized by hot, humid, tropical climates and swamp, swampy terrain with dense vegetation. The high humidity in the tropics makes it important to study the exposure of new materials to the effects of corrosion, access to insects, and microbiological damage. We expect to begin this acquisition during this month, March 23, with an award by May of 24. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, 
Our next slide is an ATEC requirement, and it's a follow-on for aviation support services. The intention to provide these services is on a small, disabled, veteran-owned small business. Set aside provided that there are two or more small businesses that are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support a set aside. The core purpose is to provide aviation, air delivery, sensor and electronic warfare, technical test services to system developers in the support of milestone and fielding decisions. The contractor's support for aviation support services acquisition is to augment the operation, maintenance, and servicing of assigned aircraft at Laguna Airfield and to provide aviation services for aviation customers. Laguna Airfield pre presently operates and maintains four UH-60A helicopters and one Cessna caravan, cargo master airplane, and instrument instrumentation platforms. All aircraft are maintained repaired at YPG Laguna Airfield by Flight Services Division. The aircraft for Army Special Operational Command, SOCOM, Military Freefall School are no longer part of this requirement, but SOCOM receives support from ABSS contractors for ground support equipment and flight operations air traffic control services. With over 1,300 square miles, YPG has the size to allow U.S. Army weapon systems to fully exercise their capabilities without endangering the public, the isolation to avoid encroachment, the climate and vegetation to avoid environmental issues, and the sea level altitude critical for a helicopter test center. The utility helicopters perform test support and test and evaluation support requirements integral to the mission accomplishment of ATEC and AMC rdt and &E organizations. YPG conducts the following test support and test and evaluation missions that support development, operational test, and evaluation of the full range of Army and joint DOD systems for Army transformation. Safety chase for hazardous flight test missions, seeker and sensor captive flight test support, aerial instrumentation and video photo support, placement, movement, and sustainment of range instrumentation support equipment and personnel, test article recovery capability, range safety, command and control capability, and environmental protection surveys, test center, range, and facility capability orientation, force protection and installation security capabilities, chemical and biological agent disbursement for testing, detection, decontamination, and safe movement. ABS test calls for comprehensive air traffic control and operations for the airfield. This requires three operations and schooling personnel and five FAA certified tower personnel. Additionally, Contractor provides a self-sufficient shop to maintain ground support equipment for use by transient and tenant aircraft. A large portion of this requirement is provision of liquid oxygen for Air Force and SOCOM aircraft. This, re this is required for the high altitude missions such as military freefall operation. The government will assess capabilities highlighting some areas such as the following. Helicopter mechanics are already required to have attended Army Black Hawk training. Since we will be down to one fixed wing, it will be more crucial for all mechanics to be able to work on Black Hawks. While a FAA civilian mechanics license is technically sufficient, military aircraft and Black Hawks specifically have unique requirements. Whenever possible, we prefer to hire mechanics who are graduates of the Army maintenance training. A primary concern is an ability to find and keeping good people in Yuma. Historically, turnover is high due to the location and the desert conditions. 
We estimate to begin this requirement in August of 2023 with an award in February 2024. Next slide. This slide is for fire suppression support services requirement. This is acquisition for the U.S. Army Garrison YPG. Currently, this is a firm fixed price indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, or an IDIQ contract. The ordering period will be 1 April 2024 through 31 March 2029. The intention is to procure these services on an 8A competitive set aside, provided there are two or more small businesses that are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support the set aside. The NICS code will remain 811318, commercial and industrial machinery and equipment. Um, please disregard the 561621 security systems Further research has brought them back to the original NAICS. The contractor shall provide inspection, testing, and maintenance of fire suppression systems, fire alarm systems, and kitchen hood cleaning. The contractor shall accomplish monthly, annual, two-year, five-year, 10-year, 20-year, 50-year ITMs and kitchen hood cleaning, quarter, semi-annual, and annual certifications as per the regulations, National Fire Protection Association and Unified Facilities criteria. The contractor shall coordinate with the fire department and the inspector shall validate year and type of inspections to be performed. This requirement also includes all types of suppression and alarm systems. These include but are not limited to the following types of systems, wet pipe, deluge systems, pre-action, halon, foam systems, carbon dioxide systems, dry and wet chemical systems, local and central alarms, coated wire and coated radio. This reacquisition will also include fire extinguishers, which will include maintenance, repair, replacement, and annual inspections. It will also include six-year hydrostatic testing. The government will assess capabilities highlighting some areas such as a qualified supervisor who shall have a National Institute for Certification in Electronic Technologies, a NICET, Level 3 certification in fire alarm systems, inspections and testing of water-based systems, or special hazard suppression systems. This information stating that a NICET 3 supervisor must be identified in the proposal. The milestones to begin this acquisition are estimated to begin at the beginning of April 2023 with an award in March 2024. Next slide. Our final slide for YPG is for paving roads. This is a new requirement. The transportation infrastructure requirement is for the Directorate of Public Works at YPG. This will be procured as a firm fixed price IDIQ contract. Individual task orders will vary in size and complexity depending on the requirement of the government and nature of the work. The intention is to procure the service on a competitive small business set aside, not an 8A as shown in the slide. Provided that there are two or more small businesses that are deemed capable to perform the requirement with information sufficient to support. The ordering period is estimated to be September 2023 through August of 2028. The requirement is for transportation infrastructure construction work as defined under NAICS 237-310 Highway Street and Bridge Construction. The contractor will furnish all labor material equipment services, transportation, and quality control necessary to construct, 
rehabilitate and maintain transportation infrastructure and a pier tents at U.S. Army Garrison Yuma Proving Ground. The contractor may be required but not limited to secure the necessary permits to complete work, earthwork, cold mill and resurface with hot mix asphalt pavement, runway rubber removal, crack sealing, chip and fog sealing, drainage repair, temporary and permanent sign placement, pavement markings, and fence replacement. The contractor shall provide sufficient technical support, project management, and labor to complete each task order. The scope of the services required in this contract will be for YPG in the counties of Yuma and La Paz. The YPG workday is Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The contractor may also be required to work outside the normal YPG workday, and it will be specified in the individual task orders. Contract specifications will comply with the Arizona Department of Transportation 2021 standard specifications for road and bridge construction or future versions as published by Arizona Department of Transportation. The milestones for this acquisition are not available at this time. Thank you for your time and interest in our requirements. Uh, this concludes the requirements for MIC YPG. Thank you. Next slide. Next slide, please. Up next is Dugway Proving Ground. Dugway, floor is yours. Good morning. My name is Jim Keach, and I'm the office director for the Dugway Proving Ground Utah Mission and Installation Command Office. And I'll be pre presenting three identified requirements for our Dugway customer. Before identifying those individual requirements, I'd like to present a few key points about Dugway Proving Ground for your awareness. Dugway is identified as the most remote installation in the continental United States. Dugway is approximately 50 miles from the closest city where some resources, supplies, or personnel may be obtained, and 80 miles from the major metropolitan area of Salt Lake City Valley. DPG consists of 1,300 square miles of high desert terrain about the size of the state of Rhode Island. Many of our construction or delivery locations may be over 100 miles from the Salt Lake Valley that must be taken into consideration with delivery schedules, commuting times, and availability of resources. Dugway works a compressed four-day work week of Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. The first requirement I'd like to present is our job order construction contract. This is a follow-on. The MIC DPG will be procuring minor job order construction services for the U.S. Army Installation Management Command Dugway Garrison. The intention of this procure is to procure these services on a competitive basis and an 8 day set aside will be considered provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable to perform the requirements with information sufficient to support this set aside. This requirement is a broad range of real property repair and construction. Potential projects include, but are not limited to, administrative facilities, maintenance shops, child development centers, physical fitness centers, maintenance shops, food service facilities, air structures, including rigid and flexible paving, roads, athletic fields, bridges, underground utilities, overhead utilities, gates, warehouses, and auditoriums. The services covered by this contract are for real property repairs and construction. Construction repair include, but are not limited to, the following services, systems and disciplines. Asbestos and, and lead-based paint abatement, foundation and site work, asphalt paving, HVAC, bridge repair, mechanical, carpentry, natural gas distribution, concrete and masonry, painting, demolition, plumbing, doors and windows, drywall, roofing, electrical, sheet metal, etc. Firm fixed price task orders will be placed under this contract for each requirement and may range in value from 2000 up to a million dollars. The government will assess capabilities based on the following criteria. Technical capabilities where the government will evaluate the clarity, adequacy, 
and capabilities of the demonstrated resources, reach back support, and timely manner, clear understanding and discipline uh, and of utilizing a unit price book, and the ability to simultaneously manage multiple tasks at various stages without delays. Proposed staffing, where the government will evaluate the offeror's proposed approach to determine whether it demonstrates adequacy, adequate oversight for the performance of the contract and all task orders. This will include validation of meeting absolute minimum staffing requirements that will be identified in the request proposal at a later date. A notational task order requirement will be required of offerors where a fictional scenario will be provided. Offerors must demonstrate the understanding of all the steps necessary for successful competition completion of the, the task order with adequate, adequate timelines and scheduling of the workload. And of course, past performance and price will also be considered. Some of the issues and concerns we've seen in the past. Dugway's extreme location has made enticing sub subcontractors a challenge with a robust construction environment much closer to major metropolitan areas of Utah. Supply, supply chain issues for ava available and necessary materials and items have resulted in significant construction delays. And available depth of partnership and or subcontracting agreements necessary to meet surge requirements, task order award timing, end of year funding, and mission related deadlines. Our anticipated timelines for this particular requirement is the current contract ends March of, this, of 2024. The release of an RFP is anticipated somewhere in the June, January 24 time frame with a late January 24 site visit anticipated. The RFP will close somewhere in the February 2024 with an award of April 24 with full performance sometime later in that month. The next slide, please. This requirement is for specialty blend industrial gases. The Dugway Proving Ground Contracting Office will be procuring specialty blended industrial gases, gas services for the U.S. Army Test and Evaluation Plan West Desert Test Center. The intention is to procure these services through full and open competition due to the unique nature of gas products required and historical quantities needed to meet mission requirements. Dugway has approximately two, 600 K size cylinders and over 50 230 liter doers supporting the West Desert mission monthly. Specialty and industrial welding gas support critical laboratory exper experiments and field repairs to structural test fixtures. Gases are essential for chemical, biological, meteorological, and explosive environment testing. Historical purchases have included ammonia and nitrogen, Cl2 and nitrogen, CO and nitrogen, cyanogen and chloride in nitrogen, ethylene diethylol in nitrogen, hydrogen cyanide in nitrogen, hydrogen sulfide in nitrogen, and sulfur dioxide in nitrogen, just to give you an idea of the types of gases used and anticipated. This contract, the contractor shall use professional standards of practice when picking up and delivering of gases and liquids ordered. The critical capability requirements are that the gases involved are highly pure, are of high purity and rarity, and offers must demonstrate the ability to produce the quantities of gases required and deliver weekly to Dugway Proving Ground. Historically, uh, local gas suppliers in Utah that are capable of mixing and delivering required gases are very limited. Counting on outside state suppliers to make deliveries would introduce a schedule risk that is unacceptable. So obviously offerors have to figure out what the, uh, the market looks like and how to obtain and meet the requirements anticipated in the contract. We also have concerns that a small business set aside consideration may result in a small business partnership where teaming with a large business is greater than regulatory thresholds and those are discouraging elements. That's why we're looking at full and open. At this point in time, our anticipated milestones are that the uh, current contract ends in April. Uh, we'll release an RFP sometime in January of 20, uh, excuse me, it, the performance ends in April of 24, an RFP in January of 24, closing in March of 24, and full, full performance around the April timeframe of 2024. Our final requirement is our West Desert Data Sciences support. 
The MIC Dugway Proving Ground Contracting Office will procure data science support services for the U.S. Army Test and Evaluation Command West Desert Test Center. The intention at this moment is to procure these services through 8A GSA STARS 3. However, we are currently involved in uh, additional discussions with the uh, Army Test and Evaluation Command Headquarters Office on their requirement, and so some of the information is still subject to change as we fish through these requirements and clarify where we're going. So Dugway Proving Ground is a major test and facility base for the U.S. Army with a primary mission to provide developmental and production testing to support the nation's chemical and biological defense programs. This contract is to provide technical support to operate, configure, test, and maintain network operations for Dugway Proving Ground West Desert Test Center Network. The contractor shall provide information assurance support, infrastructure boundary protection operations, network management, directory and authentication services, storage and virtualization services, operation support, customer software development, and test support. Critical considerations on the government's part include technical capabilities where the government will evaluate the clarity adequacy and the capability of the demonstrated resources, reach back capabilities, and recruitment and retention strategies of each offerer. Proposed staffing, where the government will evaluate the offerer's proposed approach to determine whether it demonstrates adequate oversight for the performance of the contract. This will include validation of meeting all absolute minimums, as will be identified the requirement request for proposal that will be issued at a later time. And of course, past performance and price are it could be in consideration. Recognizing concerns, again, as I mentioned, DPG is a remote location and the abundance of IT positions in many areas of the state and the, and the nation, recruiting and retention, retaining qualified personnel is a continuing challenge. The current contract, uh, the current period of performance with a FAR 22-217-8 uh, six-month extension in place ends on the, in September of 23. We're anticipating a bridge or an extension at this point in time in order to accommodate our ATEC customers' requirements and critical needs. At this time, we are anticipating uh, milestones that are subject to change. I have a release date of the RP sometime in the January 24 period, a site visit in the February 24 period, uh, RFP closing in March, award in May, and full performance in the June timeframe of 2024. This concludes my uh, presentation for the uh, Dugway Proving Ground requirements. Appreciate your interest and your time, and thank you very much. All right, thank you. Next slide. Next slide, please. Up next is Irwin for Irwin. Uh, for Irwin, the floor is yours. Good morning. My name is Carlette Clark, and I'm the Mission Support Division Chief for MIG Fort Irwin. I will be briefing the next three upcoming requirements for our office. The first requirement is for mobile corrosion rehabilitation services. The contractor is required to provide mobile corrosion rehabilitation services for government owned equipment in accordance with the manufacturer's specification and required publications that includes equipment rehabilitation services and surface preparation. The government equipment includes, but is not limited to, all tactical, special purpose, support vehicles, track vehicles, mobile communication equipment, container systems, and related ground or air equipment. The equipment corrosion rehabilitation services consist of inspection, cleaning, surface preparation, minor metal and fiberglass fabrication, repair, primer application to add a base coat of desert tan or two-tone camouflage pattern paint application, and quality control. A primary intent of this work is to restore the exterior appearance of government equipment with a new coating and mitigate visible corrosion of the equipment. The contractor is responsible for obtaining all, all required permits through the California Mojave Air Quality District in order to operate this service within the borders of the National Training Center at Fort Irwin. 
Our office intends to procure these services on a competitive basis with 100% small business set aside. The contractor is required to be certified in the state of California to perform this level of effort, have five years of experience, and provide a management approach plan. The projected award date is 18 September 2023, and our office will post a sources site late April 2023 with the solicitation scheduled to post via SAM.gov on 3 July 2023. The contract type is firm fixed price and the government has no performance issues or concerns. Next slide. The second requirement is to provide 20 pound bags of ice. The contractor will provide 20 pound bags of ice for four tenant units and various rotational support units in support of NTC rotational exercises. The ice must be provided from an approved source. Our office intends to procure these services on a competitive basis with 100% small business set aside. The current contract vehicle is an IDIQ and the evaluation criteria was price. The award date is scheduled for 2 December 2024 and we have no performance issues or concerns. Our office will post a sources site on 6 August 2024 and the solicitation will be posted 7 October 2024 via SAM.gov. Next slide. The last requirement is for hazardous waste services. The contractor is required to provide hazardous waste services that includes disposition services, detailed life cycle tracking, and the management of all hazardous waste on the installation to include reutilization or recycling of materials identified for disposition in accordance with all state, federal, local laws, and regulations. Our office intends to procure these services on a competitive basis with an 8A set aside. The government will assess capabilities highlighting some key areas such as qualified on-site manager who has a minimum of five years of experience. The award date is scheduled for 1 May 2024. The solicitation issue date is 11 March 2024, and a sources sought notice will be posted via SAM.gov on 17 January 2024. Some key concerns are the contractor's ability to ensure all hazardous waste transportation vehicles are registered with the state of California and meets the California Air Resources Board standards. Any vehicle or equipment with engines must have a current clean air vehicle decal and meet the California's zero emission vehicle standard. The contract vehicle is IDIQ and the source selection process is LPTA. Thank you for taking the time to attend the APBI. Pending any questions, this includes my brief and I will hand it back over to Mr. Trinidad for the question and answer session. Thank you so much, Mick team. We will now entertain questions from the chat. It looks like we are moving ahead of schedule, which gives us a little bit more time to answer questions. So if you give me a second while I pull some of these out. Okay, there was just a general question for contracts that are close to expiring. What will be the estimated time to reach out regarding a recompete? Uh, that is kind of one of those that depends question. Uh, what we what we typically do is a, when an action has uh, options, uh, we like to reach out uh, at least a year in advance. So when that contractor puts that uh, or when that last option is exercised, uh, we'd like to have a complete package at that time so that it can give us sufficient time, excuse me, uh, to re-procure. However, you know, it doesn't always happen in the best case scenario. So we work with the customer to get what we need in order to uh, make that award. 
but typically we like to get that package at least uh, one year in advance of, to provide sufficient acquisition time. Unless the requirement is a lot larger and requires higher level reviews, those we try to get uh, a year and a half to two years before. Uh, another question that came, could you go to a slide 52, please? This was on the Tropics test support services. And maybe Karen or TJ can help with this question. Will there be an RFI release for this requirement? And will the government consider a set aside? I wasn't sure if the 2579 had already been approved at this point or not. Karen, do you know? The um, complete package is still being worked. OK, so no, 2579 has not been put in. OK, all right, thank you. Yeah, so so on this one, uh, this one is is an overseas uh, requirement is in Panama. So. Uh, FAR 19, uh, you know, it applies to uh, work perform in the continental United States and its outlying areas. So we'll still be looking at the sources sought to come to a final conclusion. Uh, sorry, I broke up for a little bit. Uh, historically, uh, it has been uh, unrestricted and the competition has been very limited. Uh, historically, we receive about two or so proposals in this based on the publicly information, publicly available information in FPDS. All right, another question came regarding past performance and does make recognize past performance from affiliates? The short answer is yes. Uh, typically, I would uh, recommend that if you have questions specific to a particular requirement, uh, you reach out to that contracting officer, but the solicitations typically do provide information on how past performance for affiliates, subcontract, major subcontractors, and things of that nature, how to submit that information. All right, another contractor said that they have proprietary technology for reducing greenhouse gases. Uh, for that specific, uh, to provide your services, uh, for us, we typically have to have a requirement in order to process that. I would recommend that you reach out to uh, Fort Sam Houston, the Fort Sam Houston small business uh, professional. Uh, because uh, Fort Sam Houston, they do have an, uh, they do support Army Environmental Command. So maybe you can see if they have a point of contact with the Army Environmental Command, because in the past they have heard briefings from like Net Zero, uh, things like that. There's always the possibility if you have something that is unique uh, to look at the possibility of doing an unsolicited proposal. Those are outside of our control. We don't manage that. Those are managed at ACC. But we do have information on submitting an unsolicited proposal, which you could uh, provide that uh, through the ACC point of contact. Uh, slide 55, let's go ahead and go to that slide. And the question on this slide is why is this considered new? I believe that once, uh, uh, oh, and they were asking, uh, is will this be released from the AD program? So. That answer is no, it's not going to be released. As you can see, they're saying that they're going to do an 8A competitive. I uh, believe the reason why it's new, it's because it's not, it wasn't processed by our agency previously. It may have been transferred from another agency to us. But yeah, so typically what happens with a lot of uh, construction type requirements, sometimes the core has them or another agency has them. So we call, we, we're saying it's new to us, to our agency, because we didn't, it's not a recurring service for us. So we are taking it over. However, we, we still look at the past, you know, the, the his, historic, historical procurement for that requirement. So uh, yes, it was under. Sorry, Lewis. Oh, okay. I couldn't get my screen. Okay. Yeah, what was the question? I'm sorry. Um, I believe the question was, uh, was it? Uh, I saw that it is 8A competitive. So the question is, why, well, why is it being called that, a new requirement? I had briefed that they wanted to change it to small. Oh, you did? Okay. 
So uh, why why was it considered a new uh, requirement? Is this coming from another agency or? Uh, no, we don't have this requirement right now. And they're just getting they're finishing up the package in uh, DPW. Uh, so it's a brand new one. We haven't had a paving. OK. All right, thank you. So it could be that one of the other agencies has a similar requirement uh, for covering uh, similar regions or different areas. So sometimes we have that happen to some of our requirements, particularly with core actions. Some of the core contracts at times, you know, they have areas where, you know, our stop and the other one takes over and it's not really clear what section. So uh, we work with the customer to ensure that when we have our statement of work, it it's clear on what we're covering. All right, uh, next one is MTSS recompete. Why wasn't this one brief? Uh, we we did have a lot of issues that happened with that one, so we weren't going to process the follow on. So initially that was going to go under a consolidated uh, action process by ACC. Uh, however, uh, at the last minute that package was sent back to us. So we had to, we were forced to do a JNA to extend uh, that particular contract uh, while we resolicit the follow on. So we're working with the customer to put a package together and do everything that we need to do to get that package moving forward. So they're basically going from a consolidated uh, PWS, which is what they were contemplating at the time, to breaking it back out and putting all those documents together. Uh, but separately this time, so it does. It's a lot of work to to get that done, and we did uh, get a JNA approved, or we're in the process of getting a JNA approved to cover, uh, so we can put that package together. So that's part of the reason it wasn't brief. I don't know if TJ or Karen, you wanted to add anything to that? No, um, we were briefing uh, 23 and 24 expected awards, and that okay. is out of the milestones. OK, there you go. All right, and then there was one on slide 60. If you could go to slide 60. It's Mr. Keech. Hey, Jim, so the question on this one was, does the contract on slide 60 data science require a secret or top secret or any clearance for the company or their personnel on site? If so, can that cost be added into the proposal or would the governor cover that cost factor? So to answer the first part of that question, Lewis, uh, yes, it will require secret clearances uh, for the majority, if not all of the personnel and a facility clearance as well. And uh, cost of doing business would have anticipated it could be considered and uh, added to pricing and, and reimbursable by the government. All right, thank you so much. All right, and I saw another uh, general question. This one made me laugh just because it's, hey, uh, can you provide any tips or examples on how a small business wowed you in a presentation? Uh, I mean, I, I would say we we typically, right, when, when a contractor uh, talks to us, if, if, their, if their documentation is good to go, their capabilities package, is good to go. It's helpful, right? Because we can pro when we provide that information to the contracting officer, then they're able to see what that contractor uh, capabilities are, right? So what's helpful is if you if you're able to speak on your uh, capability, what what is your uh, what have you done? You know, what are your, uh, what assets do you have? If you come to us and are ready to speak requirements, you know, you've done your your uh, homework in the front end and are able to say, look, these are the requirements I'm interested in. This is what I bring to the table for for this. Uh, this is you know, this is how we're capable. I responded to the sources sought. You know, I think I think that's very helpful. Uh, so the more the more prepared you are to meet with us, I think the better you will shine. And of course, when we provide your information to our contracting officers, if you have a capability package that's well put together, then that's also helpful to them uh, when they're reviewing and, and uh, trying to determine your capability. So hopefully that helps with that question. 
All right, and it looks like those were all the questions. Closing out today's event, we'll hear from our MIC Joint Base Lewis McCord office and their pavement marking requirements. Next slide, please. J JBLM, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Trinidad. So I'm Ralph Chavez, the Chief of the Mission Support Division here at MCJBLM and also the Contracting Officer for some of the requirements I'm about to brief. So before we start with PAVE and markings, just a couple of things. The intent of MCJBLM is to procure services for some of our mission partners to include Installation Management Command, Army Sustainment Command, and Defense Health Agency. Our intent is to procure these services on a competitive basis. Small business set-asides will be considered provided two or more small businesses are deemed capable to perform a requirement with information su sufficient to support the set aside. Uh, the only exception being JRTC, which will be one of the slides that I'll be briefing here shortly. Um, and lastly, before we start, what I'd like to say, you're gonna see a lot of forecasted days, anticipated information. As some of my peers have said, please, please monitor SAM.gov so that once uh, these requirements are posted, you have the final disposition of the important information to include the contract type, what our final evaluation criteria is going to be, and any specific set aside, especially if it's a socioeconomic program. So that said, I will go ahead and start with pavement markings. And again, what I'll do is kind of give you just a brief overview of the slide and then kind of cover some of the key task areas, some of the key te uh, technical capabilities, and then lastly, kind of those areas of emphasis or concerns from our customer just to make sure these contracts are successful. So again, starting with pavement marking, this one is in support of IMCOM, specifically the Department of Public Works. The requirement is basically to provide all tools, equipment, labor to execute striping requirements on JBLM and Yakima Training Center. Yakima Training Center, for your information, is approximately 150 miles from JBLM, but does fall under the purview of this uh, IDIQ. So again, it's intended to cover things from street, parking lot, and airfield stripe paving in various locations. So um, just a quick update. It was intended to be solicited on the first. It is a, uh, a little bit behind. So this will be our, of the requirements on briefing, this will be the first one that actually gets posted on SAM.gov. So this one should go out in the next week to two weeks. So please, please monitor that. So like again, the uh, anticipated award date will probably shift to the right just a little based on the actual issuing dates. But again, the intent is to then do an IDIQ for a fixed price, et cetera. The anticipated next is 237310, Highway Street and Bridge Construction. And again, uh, it will be a small business set aside. So some of the key items that you're going to do that is an area of emphasis include things such as um, Paint marking, paint, painting parking lot stalls, stripes, arrows, stop bars, and miscellaneous markings. Painting, repainting, and restriping off pavement re reflectorized and non reflectorized markings. And other area of emphasis in making sure that uh, the contractor uses the proper traffic control signs and equipments and certified traffic control personnel when they're working on or adjacent to uh, streets on JBLM and Yakima Training Center. So some of the key requirements, capability requirements we're going to be looking for are one, the ability for the contractor to manage multiple work efforts. So this will be a task order driven contract. So the intent is the contractor will be working multiple projects under multiple task orders concurrently. So that's one of our areas of emphasis, the ability to manage multiple ongoing actions. And then also the ability to respond to RFIs, warranty work, and specifically daily reports for all of the active contracts and task orders. And lastly, we are really looking for a plan that provides how they're going to provide adequate program manager and project managers for each task order issued under this effort. In terms of, again, areas of emphasis and concerns, one of the things we're looking for is just um, Notification, so as these projects are ongoing, as they switch from phase to phase, just making sure the government is aware of how the projects are tra transitioning to the next phase of the project itself. And then again, when because the intent is multiple uh, projects, is providing us an adequate work schedule, not just project specific, but basically that kind of details out where every project is at that time so that the government is 
can actively monitor everything and make sure everything's de being done to spec. So uh, that will this again cover the payment markings. So if we can move, please move on to the next slide. So this one is uh, vertical transportation equipment, which is a fancy way to basically say elevators, escalators, and lifts. So it's for the repair and maintenance of all VTEs at Madigan Army Medical Center here on JBLM, which falls under the Defense Health Agency. So right now our uh, anticipated solicitation date is April of 2024 with an award date of 1 November. As you can see, the previous contract was done as a LPTA with an SDVOSB set aside, and that would be our intent pending market research or anything uh, changing that. So again, some of the key things that this is going to do, the key areas is basically the contractor responsible for full service maintenance and repair of all VTEs within the hospital. Ensuring that all maintenance is performed to code regulations and specifications and identifying any work that's not covered by standard maintenance and identifying that to the to the government with an anticipated cost for accomplishing any over and above work. Some of the key technical capabilities that are going to require is one that uh, all mechanics must present a current license and certification from the state of Washington. One, the ability to respond to emergency calls within two hours. And because of the critical nature of this requirement and, and being that it's in a hospital and it's, it supports patient care, this requirement will call for the contractor to provide at least one full time mechanic on site during the standard eight hour, eight hour day that would be spelled out in the PWS, which is a little bit different than the norm, but historically with Madigan being such a critical thing in lieu of always having a two hour response. What they're looking to do is a full time mechanic on site eight hours a day, five days a week. So again, um, any again, the areas of emphasis one is just kind of ensuring that repairs are done in a timely manner due to their support for patient care. They can't have elevators, especially down when they're having to transport patients. Um, ensuring all maintenance plans are current according to each specific VTE. And lastly, uh, the willingness for any interested parties to provide that full time mechanic that resides at Madigan during the eight hour workday. So that concludes the VT maintenance. So we could switch to the next one, please. So this one is just a quick one. This is our most highly visible and uh, biggest magnitude contract that JBLM is working. This is for mission support services in support of our fellow Nick at um, Fort Polk. So again, this is in support of Force, Forcecom and the JRTC Training Center. So this one is ever fluid, so you'll see a lot of uh, TBDs. So what I can tell you, and I apologize not on there, there is a solicitation reference. So if you're interested, it is Whiskey 911 Sierra 8 21 R 0017. So there is a draft solicitation actually posted on SAM.gov right now. And what our intent for that is, is to try to get a provide industry a better understanding of the requirement and to see if industry can provide comments and suggestions and questions so that we can promote a truly efficient turnkey solution and make sure that you know we're taking those innovative and that input from industry so that our requirement can be uh, meet its best intent. So the intent is to do a cost plus fixed fee and like I mentioned before this one is full and open competition that has already been determined. So the current contract expires at the end of this month. They will be doing a six month extension. So like I said, please, please monitor this one because of the magnitude of this one. Besides the draft solicitation that's currently posted, we are basically doing monthly updates on SAM.gov just to give current status and updates on milestones. So uh, pending any questions, I will go ahead and go to the next one which is our local moves contract here for JVLM. I guess this one um, has a forecasted award date of 30 September this year. So our anticipated solicitation is actually in the next month or so. So this one basically supports uh, GIPSO specifically, and this supports the uh, 
the moving and, and when PCS for all of our uh, active duty uh, airmen and soldiers here on JBLM. So again, this one currently was it's the intent is a small business set aside and uh, previously it was done as a small business set aside as an LPTA. So again, some of the key items that we're looking for is the proper loading containerization for personal property for our supported military. On time delivery and pickups of personal property and accurate invoicing of charges. The uniqueness of this one and of the other ones I will be briefing on packing and crating is this doesn't have a traditional billing like you would through wide air workflow. It's through a miscellaneous pay based on the travel orders of the military members. So again, in terms of capabilities, what we're making a sure contracts can do is adhere to all defense travel guidance and the ability to use the mandatory third party payment sy system that I just mentioned. Um, no real er areas of emphasis other than, you know, just to note that this does support our active duty airmen and soldiers. So just, you know, that's it's definitely key to their quality of life. So I will go ahead and go on to our next one. Which is the integrated commercial intrusion detection system, which most people frequently know as ICIDS, in this case, ICIDS 2 and ICIDS 4. This one supports MCOM, specifically uh, the Department of Emergency Services, DES. So the intent is to monitor, maintain, repair, replace, and manage the current JBLM ICIDS platform to ensure there's 100% operational status. So right now, our anticipated solicitation date is the September of this year with an award of February of 2024. Previously, it was done as an unrestricted, and I think that's due because you have to have only certified integrators can work on ICIDs. And again, it was done as an LPTA. So again, some of the key um, task areas is basically ICIDs 2 monitors, dynamics in the hardware flat, Platforms, manufacture, and safe net as command and control operating system for ICIDs. All installation and service must be completed by a certified integrator. And in terms of ICIDs 4, DAQ is the hardware platform manufacturer, and Starwatch SMS is the command and control operating system for ICIDs 4. All installation and service must be completed again by a certified uh, integrator. So some of those key um, capabilities is that they want the Ensure that we have the obviously the certified integrators, ensuring that they have the capability for the VLAN to be connected and all CCTV components to be operational. And lastly, the contractor is responsible for ensuring all SIDS primary and secondary monitoring workstations are maintained operational throughout the base and awarded option years. In terms of areas of emphasis and concerns, one is just making sure that. Um, Ensuring that the uh, I'm sorry, the supporting IT and ESS certifier certification on site managers have the proper uh, access. And again, operational experience with the ESS, such as ICIDs, etc. So now we will go on to the next one. So packing and grading. So this one is actually two requirements and it's historically been solicited together. So they provide the same service. The only difference is one contract specifically supports uh, Washington and, and again, active duty that are stationed in the state of Washington. And the other one supports military personnel in the Portland, Oregon area. So the two contracts do the same thing. It's just the area, the AOR that they cover. And that's what differentiates the two. So again, right now the forecasted solicitation date is 1 March of 2024 with an anticipated award date of 1 October of 2024. Previously, it was a small business set aside and it was a firm fixed price IDIQ and that is our intent as well pending any changes. So in some of the key tasks that the contractor does is pre-move pre -move surveys, weighing of all uh, personal property for those service members, storage of the materials, providing proper facilities, ensuring that containers and vehicles are up to code, and the ability to service and unservice the appliance that are going to be uh, a part of the move itself for the service member. 
And sir, in terms of, again, of the technical capability requirements, the key items include the ability to adhere to all defense travel guidance. To properly submit, this is done with a very detailed pricing matrix based on all the different sub areas and tasks that are done. So the ability to complete and submit a proper pricing matrix. And again, the ability to use that third party payment system, which is a non wide area workflow payment system. And one of the key performance areas and areas of emphasis they wanted to stress again is because this supports the service member. It's the ability to engage professionally and provide good communication with our service minute, uh, members. And because we're working with service members the, to understand and have the ability to adapt to schedule changes based on the availability of the supported service members. And I will go to my last one, which is providing a Roman Catholic priest for Madigan Army Medical Center, which again is falls under the purview of the Defense Health Agency. So right now our anticipated solicitation date is 1 July of 2023 with a forecasted award date of 2024. Um, this one was done previously as a small business set aside with just based on price and price related factors. So some of the key areas that I want to cover in terms of this that they're going to do task areas. One is this is the uh, full time uh, Roman Catholic priest supporting Madigan Army Center, Medical Center, so they will be performing you know, weekly masses. They will also be responsible for patient visitations, emergency visitations and uh, attending pre identified meetings and required trainings as part of the Army Chaplaincy Corps. So in terms of the capabilities, the biggest thing uh, uh, doing chaplain support is, is unique in itself and there's uh, special requirements related to it. So the biggest one is a part of the solicitation. The contractor is going to be responsible to complete a DD form 2088, which is a statement of ecclesiastical endorsement. And what that does is it basically goes to the approving army agency who validates that they have the experience and the requirements to meet that core task on behalf of the Army. So that will be a part of the um, solicitation and a well, as well as they also have to show transcripts that they have a minimum of at least two units of clinical pastoral education. So historically there hasn't been any issues. The, the one thing is just that because it's at Madigan, again, it is strictly tied into patient care. So there is a heavy emphasis on this one and just ensuring it's successful. So um, that is the last one that I have to brief and I believe that concludes it for the 418th CSB. So I will stand by for questions as I turn it back to Mr. Trinidad. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. We now have time to entertain questions from the chat. All right, so let's see, one of the questions was from an, uh, somebody who's an accountant, Robin Smith, and they were just asking, you know, how, how to become a subcontractor for those type of, for that type of work. Uh, we don't have, uh, we don't monitor the, as far as the subcontracts, like what exactly gets subcontracted. But I would say what I would recommend to you is that you look for uh, cost type contracts where solicitations are issued for cost type contracts because those, uh, require an adequate accounting system. So my suggestion would be definitely look for those type of actions and reach out to the contractors that want to be primed for those, particularly if it's a small business set aside. A lot of times the large, the larger actions that have that are unrestricted, that have large businesses, uh, they typically have in source resources for that, but the small ones uh, will typically look for outside, may look for outside help. So anybody looking for an accountant, Robin Smith is in there and when you get the list of contractors that might be somebody for you to reach out to. All right, another question. Uh, could we go back to slide 72? Uh, this was uh, Ralph's uh, slide on. Uh, uh, yeah, they were asking uh, if you could provide an estimate on the no earlier than date for the JRTC RFP release date. So I would say just based on where we're at, it's not going to be any time before June at this point. So it's going to be after June for sure. But like I mentioned, the key thing is we, because of the magnitude of this one and the and, and of course the, the complexity and um, that yeah, it is, no. there is, we're doing that, we're doing a monthly update on sam.gov. So as we 
uh, codify milestones and make any changes. We're basically putting even just an overview like, hey, you know, update, you know, even though they might not be finalized, now we're looking more at this time frame. So just please monitor under that solicitation number on SAM.gov. And as we start uh, finalizing those dates, we'll make sure they get posted. OK, yeah, so this type of action for everybody just, you know, when it's a dollar of this magnitude, it requires a high, a high level of reviews. So sometimes it's really hard for the contracting officer to ping exactly when uh, release dates will be or when things will happen because there's a lot of th steps that happen there that are outside of his control. Those higher level reviews, they may have a lot of comments, they may have no comments, and that really impacts the milestones on when, when that gets posted. But having said that, I can tell you that while this isn't a small business set aside, we work closely with Mr. Chavez to come up with very realistic but challenging goals. So in uh, this this requirement, because it's trade off, it will have a small business participation factor. And in order to to get an outstanding good rating, that contractor will have to exceed those goals. So just keep that in mind. Whoever's proposing to the for those, they will be looking for capable small businesses uh, in order to uh, do well on that small business participation factor. So that does offer an opportunity. If you can do a portion of that work, I would definitely recommend that you attend those site, uh, any site visits or industry days, anything like that held, because that's very useful. All right, and I don't see any further questions as of right now. If if by uh, if we miss any of your questions, please keep in mind that all questions submitted through the chat will be captured and answered and posted to sam.gov. Uh, you may also provide written questions to us via email after this event. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our final day of the 2023 MIC APBI. We hope that you find the information presented this week useful and it helps position your company for success. Don't forget all requirements briefed today will be sent to event attendees and a full three year detailed acquisition forecast will be posted to sam.gov. Please let us know how we did. So I'm going to go ahead and post our survey again. We would really love to hear from you. Uh, notice that some people answered, but a lot of participants still haven't taken the time. It should only take like maybe three to four minutes to, to fill out. Uh, we really would appreciate your, your feedback. It is important to us. Maintaining transparency, increasing competition, and increasing the in defense industrial base remains a big priority. People first, winning matters, live the legacy. Thank you for attending our 2023 APBI and have a great rest of the day.